The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Morning here for realagriculture.com. Welcome back to another Canola School episode. We are joined today by Jaden Woodsparrow. Jaden is the agronomy lead for GMAX. How's it going today, Jaden? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Thanks so much for joining us on this very hot day here in West Central Saskatchewan. Uh, today we're going to be honing in on swathing and specifically swath timing. So I think the general overreaching question here is when is ideal swath timing and what are producers looking for to identify that time frame, that window? Yeah, so the ideal swath time is 60% seed color change. Um, so when you're going out to look for 60% seed color change, um, there's a few things you have to consider. Um, number one, what's your plant stand like? Um, how bushy are the plants? So um, over time, our canola plant stands, our, our target is five to seven plants per square foot. Um, in the past, it's been higher, 10 to 14. So uh, that caused less br branchy plants. Um, but now with five to seven, we tend to have bigger branches on the plant. So you have to consider the branches and the main stem. Um, so when you look at the main stem, the bottom pods should have black seeds in them. Um, the middle pods should be uh, changing color. So when I say changing color, I mean any uh, seed that has some color change on it, even if it's just a speck. Um, and then the top pods are gonna be still green, but when you push, uh, roll them between your fingers, they're gonna be firm and they're not gonna squish. So we're looking for that seed color change about 60% of the way up, and then those top uh, seeds you want to not squish between your fingers. Um, and then, as I said, you wanna, you're really looking at the main stem, but you wanna consider the branches depending on uh, uh, how thick of a stand you have. Right, and how how quickly can those change on the plant? Like, should you guys be going out every single day? I guess depends on those weather conditions that you're experiencing in your area. Yeah, it definitely depends on weather conditions. Um, yeah, I would say things can change, you know, three to four days, you can have 10% change. But when we have intense heat like we've had uh, recently, things can change very rapidly. Um, I don't think you need to be out every day, but, uh, you know, every three days you might want to be checking on that crop and as it gets closer to that timing you might want to be out there more often but things like variety play into that and, and pod shatter resistance and, and things like that. So, Outside of the condition of the plant or the pods, what should producers be keeping in mind or be cognizant of when kind of deciding that ideal swath time? Are we looking ahead to the forecast to see if we have rain coming? What other considerations should come into play here? Uh, one of the biggest considerations uh, would be how, uh, yeah, how hot it is and how far along the crop is. So if you get in there a little bit later, um, which people are moving more and more towards, um, just because you get bigger seeds and you tend to get more yield, even if you have a little bit of shatter when you're swathing, um, you might not want to swath when it's 34 degree heat like we've got because um, you'll have more losses. You might want to wait till the evening when things are cooling off and the pods just have a little more integrity. Um, and as far as rain goes, you're not really concerned uh, too much about rain. Uh, rain can actually, as the canola is laying in the swath, it can pull some of the green out of the seeds. Um, so rain's not the worst thing on, on canola swath. So um, it's not as, as big of a concern. All right, and you kind of mentioned there, Jaden, a little bit about guys going out a little bit later. What are the ramifications if guys go out a little too late? What are they gonna be looking at? And what is some of those byproducts of swathing too late into the growing season? Yeah, I guess the biggest concern going too late is um, having pods uh, shatter and having pods drop. Um, not only just when you're swathing, but just standing out in the field if we get big winds like we sometimes get in Saskatchewan. Um, you can lose a lot of yield from them dropping to the ground and, and pods shattering open. And that can also happen when you're swathing. Um, but something also to consider as you wait longer um, you do get bigger seeds and you do get better fill in those top pods. So um, sometimes growers go out and think that they're losing lots of yield because they're shattering and they feel that they're a little too late. Um, but sometimes that actually translates to higher yields as the seeds are bigger. Always that balance, right? And on the flip side of that, Jaden, what if guys are going out too early? What are some of those uh, ramifications they may be dealing with? 
Um, one of the biggest ones is locking in green seeds. So you'll get um, those seeds that aren't able to mature and they stay green and that's a quality concern when you go to sell that canola. Um, and then the other thing is those top pods won't finish. So um, those seeds won't even stay green and get in the combine tank. They'll be too small and they're gonna end up blowing out the back and you're, you're really leaving yield on the table if you end up swathing too early. Right, so anything outside of that ideal window sounds like obviously you can risk some yield loss either side of it. For sure. Great, thanks so much for joining us today, Jaden. You bet.